Knuckles the Echidna. He can dig, climb, and glide through the air as gracefully as a roided up ballerina. His likes include digging holes, not a euphemism, as you see he fears girls. He's a shy guy, also has an intense dislike for strong sunshine. Obviously, I'm just kidding around here. There's a lot more to the Big Red Machine than any barebones character bio or relentless meme could ever portray. It's funny, I've been watching with great interest as everyone, myself included, has been getting more and more hyped for the big screen debut of Knuckles in the second Sonic movie. Seriously, people are losing their minds and it all just sits in stark contrast to everything we've experienced with him in the game universe for what, like 14 years now? It's crazy. But you know what that tells me? It tells me that somehow, even after all the aimless misuse and memification, that people can still see what made this character special once upon a time. And that is what this video will be about. Sure, there are plenty of totally garbage takes on his character, and don't worry, we'll be taking a look at those too. But primarily, we're going to be looking at why Knuckles is so damn important to the Sonic series. And that fact may seem alien to a lot of people, understandable with the amount of gaslighting that goes on about this series. But that buzz and interest you see now around movie Knuckles? Yeah, this all happened before and it led to some pretty amazing stories going on to influence the narrative and lore of the game series for a whole decade. But just before we jump into all the good stuff, and quick spiel. If you like videos like this, analyzing and discussing all aspects of the Sonic series, reviewing its games and sometimes other franchises too, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you find yourself enjoying the video, if you could drop a like, that would be awesome. All those simple clicks go a long way towards helping the channel grow, and that in turn will help me bring you guys more and more content. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get started, shall we? As I said, this whole hype train we're seeing around Knuckles now, this happened before. Back in 94, as hard as this may be to believe, Sega showed the same enthusiasm and commitment to Knuckles that the writers and director of the Paramount movie are now. And similar to how we were first introduced to him in the movie trailer, there was no question of how seriously they took the character of Knuckles during his 16-bit debut, cementing him as a true badass and forced to be reckoned with the very first instant he shone on screen. He straight up knocks Sonic out of his super form, steals the Chaos Emeralds, and leaves him dazed and confused before he has a chance to do anything about it. What an entrance. He managed damaging Sonic while he was super, and after his now patented cocky chuckle, you cocky cock, he leaves as mysteriously as he appeared. It wasn't just his actions that made Knuckles a smash hit either. He also had an awesome eye-catching design to back it all up. Like Sonic, Knuckles has a very simple but pleasing colour palette, and since he's a different species, obviously has very different features when compared to him, and this theme of opposites dominates his whole design. His blazing red fur, representing his passionate nature, contrasting the cool and calming blue of Sonic. His dreadlocks sleek down where Sonic's quills stand up, and his huge spiked gloves make it clear that this guy is all about strength his posture and puffed out chest, giving him a much more sturdy appearance when compared to Sonic's speedy, more nimble design and build. The theme of opposites is reinforced further by the moon-like crescent shape on Knuckles' chest, contrasting Sonic's sun-shaped belly, said to be inspired by the similar markings of the Asian black bear, and chosen to represent the bear-like strength that Knuckles possesses. You can tell a great deal of care and attention was put into all aspects of Knuckles' design, and thankfully with the focus of the developers now squarely on storytelling and universe expansion, that same care and attention was put into his character and backstory as well. It seems at first like Knuckles is nothing more than a chuckling nuisance, some random guy who seems to get his kicks from trolling Sonic at every turn. Is he simply a robotic lackey? There's definitely more questions than answers, as Sonic repeatedly encounters this chuckle monster while navigating Angel Island. Like, how does he constantly get to jump on him? Always having a secure escape route, leaving Sonic looking like a fool after falling into yet another trap. And how exactly did he pull this off? There's definitely more to this red echidna than meets the eye. 
But it isn't until Mushroom Hill, halfway through Sonic's story, where we finally get some insights into the character of Knuckles, as well as his motivations. When Sonic gets to jump on Knuckles for a change, we see him try and fail to do a sneaky and conceal an entrance to Hidden Palace, home of the Master Emerald, the colossal and immensely powerful gem that gives Angel Island its ability to levitate. And you see the consequences of its removal multiple times throughout the game. The Master Emerald holds untold power and has a connection with the Seven Chaos Emeralds. So if Knuckles is trying to protect it, and hasn't just given it to Robotnik, he can't simply be his lackey. There has to be more to this. And there is. See, after Sonic took out the Death Egg in Sonic 2, it crash-landed, right on top of this strange floating island, the impact causing it to fall out of the sky and into the ocean, creating the tidal wave that brought Sonic and Tails here to investigate. When he landed, Robotnik detected the immensely powerful emerald straight away. The only issue now was finding it. During his search, he's confronted by Knuckles, the last remaining guardian of the island, who questions him on just what it is he's doing here. But see, Robotnik is a sneaky bitch, and with some quick thinking, knowing it's only a matter of time before Sonic shows up, he tells Knuckles that his ship was attacked by an emerald thief. All he wanted was to repair his ship and leave, but he fears Sonic would be here soon, and that he would steal any emeralds on the island. You see, after such a long time isolated on Angel Island, socially, Knuckles is a bit derp. He's been alone here with no outside contact for as long as he can remember, diligently carrying out his duties as the sole protector of the Master Emerald. And while his understanding of the murals in Hidden Palace is never made known, it's at least conceivable that he could have interpreted them in such a way that reinforces Robotnik's lies. Knuckles is not stupid. He just used the limited information he had and stuck to his strict code of protecting his home. And he now stands ready to take on this intruder one-on-one -on -one as the Master Emerald's last line of defense. But, ultimately, he loses what he believes was a fight for his home, failing in his duty as Guardian. And to add insult to injury, Robotnik chooses now to dick him over and makes his play for the Master Emerald. And even though he fails to stop him as well, Knuckles never lets it get to him. A weaker mind may have crumbled under the pressure, as everything he ever knew fell down around him. But Knuckles just gets up, dusts himself off, swallows his pride, and turns to Sonic for help, entrusting him with access to Sky Sanctuary, a place sacred to his tribe, and no outsiders are permitted to step foot. He's big enough to admit he was wrong, and takes a chance on Sonic who is as good as his word, and returns the Master Emerald to its rightful place with Knuckles. Happy ending, best buds, catch you later. But it's actually during Knuckles' own story, after the events of Sonic's is finished, that we get to see him truly shine. See, one of Robotnik's remaining Egg Robos has gotten it into its head that it has to finish the job its master started. Bombing Knuckles, relighting the jungle on fire, and otherwise tearing shit up as Knuckles chases it around the island. Knuckles' natural affinity as a treasure hunter is very much evident in his abilities and how he masterfully traverses the island, really opening up this game's beautiful setting and letting you explore it like nobody else could, climbing, gliding, and rage smashing his way into every secret area it has to offer. This also ties in perfectly with Knuckles being a guardian. He's been here alone for such a long time, learning the many secrets of the island, including all the best ways to get around, which also explains how he got the jump on Sonic so easily. Guy's been digging all over the place like a buff and sexy diglet, probably due to his role as guardian of the Master Emerald, and the knowledge of chaos energy that entails. Knuckles can harness the power of the Chaos Emerald to achieve a super and hyper form, and I always felt this worked great on two levels. One, it helps portray Knuckles as a very capable character, one with a deep and extensive backstory, and a real connection to the Emeralds. And two, at that time, in the universe itself, it helped build the rivalry between Big Red and the Blue Blur, adding a sense of anything you can do, I can do better to their relationship. This game was all about pitting these two colossal forces against each other, before eventually bringing them together for the greater good. Knuckles had a lifetime of adventures ahead of him in the series, and giving him the ability to harness the power of the Emeralds really was a big deal for elevating his status to what it should be. Back then, Tails could only achieve Super with the seven Super Emeralds, 
but this was setting Knuckles firmly on the same level as Sonic, and that was crucial for making him just as important. When it's revealed that the Egg Robo has been working with Mecha Sonic to steal the Master Emerald, Knuckles is left to retrieve it on his own this time, with no help from outsiders. And even when faced with Mecha's super form, he stands firm and valiantly protects his home, exploiting momentary lapses in its super state to defeat it. And even though it could mean his own death, he's liberated the Master Emerald from the hands of evil, redeeming himself from his failures. And like the stoic and dutiful guardian he is, Knuckles is ready to go down with the last of Sky Sanctuary, just so long as the Master Emerald is safe. But, for the first time, Knuckles discovers what it means to have friends, as Sonic comes back to rescue him with a tornado, returning him and the Master Emerald safely to Angel Island. You would think, after everything that's happened to him in this game, that Knuckles would probably be justified in swearing off outsiders for good. They've brought nothing but trouble to his lonely but peaceful existence after all. But by the end, he realizes he doesn't have to be alone anymore, and can see the benefits of easing up on his reclusive ways. He may not know it yet, but he's made two lifelong friends in Sonic and Tails, and probably for the first time in his life, feels like he can count on someone besides himself. This might be the earliest example we see of Sonic's amazing ability to bring people together, an admirable trait we see more and more from him when he's at his best, and shows that he has the influence and charisma to bring even what once was an enemy on side. In this case, it was Sonic's actions that spoke the loudest, and Knuckles respected that. Knuckles' introduction marked a point in the series where Sega wanted to expand the Sonic universe, adding deeper lore elements and meaningful characters to the games. And this is the parallel I drew back at the beginning between this game and the second Sonic movie. In Sonic 3 and Knuckles, a solid plan was in place for Knuckles and where he fit into the series going forward. And I know it's not out yet, but all indications point to the same situation for movie Knuckles. One of the greatest things about Knuckles is that he's effectively a two-for-one character. Not only do you get him, but you also get Angel Island, and the wealth of lore and potential stories that can be made around it and the Master Emerald. Case in point being the great stories that would soon follow in the adventure era. Knuckles worked so well here because he was believably portrayed as on a similar level to Sonic. And Azuka can retcon and say only male hedgehogs can go super now, but that's really just complete revisionist nonsense by a modern Sonic team attempting to tidy up difficult series history and make their own lives easier. The same reason we now lose out on things like the Super Emeralds and Hyperforms. Knuckles' introduction in Sonic 3 and Knuckles is probably one of the best in the series, especially when you consider the rich history and complicated nature of his character, and that it all had to be conveyed to the audience without a single word of spoken or written dialogue. Knuckles was now set up nicely for many years of great adventures, and to any watching at this time, his future really couldn't have looked any brighter. The lore of Angel Island and the dark and bloody history of its Echidna tribe form the basis for pretty much the entire story of Sonic Adventure, finally giving some answers to us nerds who spent a slightly shameful amount of time speculating about what might have happened to Knuckles' ancestors. <laughs> no, seriously, me and my friends used to physically search Angel Island for answers, in the happy days before the internet ruined all sense of wonder in the world. Like being able to convince my friends I randomly found Celebi in Ilex Forest. What the f is a game shark? But despite his lore and history being pivotal to the story, Big Red himself isn't quite as prominent as he was back in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. No more being on the box or being able to play through all the same stages as Sonic. Now he's tucked away into his own side story, collecting pieces of the Master Emerald after it's shattered by chaos. There's a bit of rehashing of the past, with Angel Island falling from the sky and Knuckles and Sonic throwing hands, which arguably could be considered lazy, but I think it's a decent way of re-establishing Angel Island and the Master Emerald as important in the series. After all, kids who were introduced to the series with this game probably never even played the classics. It could also be argued that Knuckles being tricked into fighting Sonic by Eggman again makes him look stupid. But look, as I said before, Knuckles is not stupid. 
Or maybe that should be was not stupid? Anyway, naive? Impulsive? Irrational? Maybe even slightly gullible? Sure, but stupid? No. Not only has his island once again crashed out of the sky, but a strange creature has destroyed the Master Emerald, the very thing he's charged with protecting, and the only way to restore his island safely into the air. Knuckles is very much a character who's driven by emotion, and he wears them on his sleeve. He's seen Eggman didn't have what he wanted, was told Sonic did, so went to check it out. He doesn't fully trust Sonic yet after all, so he's not above suspicion either. And I wasn't disappointed getting to try this fight out again in 3D. Just saying. But most importantly, we also get some cool insights into Knuckles' inner dialogue in this game, where we see him begin to actually question things. Like why he's here, why it's his fate to protect Angel Island and the Master Emerald. If Knuckles was stupid, I don't really think he would question things on this level. And once he learns the score, he does help Sonic where possible. But his main focus is always on restoring the Master Emerald and getting Angel Island airborne again. Which is a great way of showing that even though he's having doubts, his deeply ingrained sense of duty to his home still comes first. But he now also has a new sense of obligation to his friends too. In the end, it seems like Knuckles isn't sure if he wants to delve any deeper into his past. Maybe for fear that what he might discover could weaken his resolve. And this internal conflict between inherited duty and his personal feelings would continue to be a big part of his story going forward, adding some real emotional depth. In Sonic Adventure 2, the introduction of Shadow had the kind of unfortunate side effect of cutting off Knuckles' rivalry with Sonic at the legs, with Shadow now firmly, and quite successfully, filling that role. And as a result, Knuckles is slightly awkwardly shoehorned into carrying out the exact same tasks he had in Sonic Adventure 1, smashing the Master Emerald himself in order to prevent it from being stolen, running around once again trying to collect all the pieces. But that's okay. He may be doing the same stuff he did before, but as I said, now that Shadow's here, there's been a big shift in dynamic for Knuckles, and his entire role within the series at this point looked to be set for a big change. In his search for the Master Emerald pieces, Knuckles is now competing against another new character, fellow treasure hunter Rouge the Bat. Rouge is a sassy and seductive jewel thief and a part-time spy, and now has her sights firmly set on Knuckles' precious stones. As you might expect, this clash of personalities and their conflicting goals pretty much guarantees a mutual hatred between these two, with lots of petty sniping and some moderate choking throughout the early portions of the game. But as time goes on, they both actually begin to soften their stance towards each other, and what I can only describe as some sneaky sexual tension begins to creep into the equation, albeit always hidden behind a veil of low-key hostility. Knuckles actually begins to let down his emotional guard in this game. He now has a much more friendly and trusting relationship with Sonic, showing much more willingness to cooperate and work as a team. Yeah, he'll occasionally break ranks and get tunnel vision when it comes to the Master Emerald, crashing a spaceship or two in the process, but for the most part, he's usually more than willing to help out where he can, returning to the group as soon as he takes care of his own business. In the end, Knuckles plays a crucial role in the story by using the Master Emerald to neutralize the Chaos Emeralds, preventing the Ark from colliding with Earth. Yeah, he had to sit back as Sonic and Shadow saved the day, but his actions and the lore centering around his backstory all played a huge part in making the story of Sonic Adventure 2, one of the most highly praised stories in the series, work as well as it did. Whether it was meeting Rouge, or for some other unknown reason, Knuckles' hard emotional shell softens considerably in this game, and he becomes a much more official member of Team Sonic, showing far less resistance to working with others. At this point, I think his relationship with Rouge, had it continued to progress, would have actually been really interesting. It would have been the first proper relationship in the series that wasn't one way, and represented a nice potential segue towards something else for his character, especially with the quote-unquote rival role now falling to shadow. Sonic Adventure 2 always seemed to me like the unofficial and unspoken point where his motivations start to move away from his duty as Guardian. 
a duty that back in Sonic Adventure 1 he admits he has no personal stake in besides heritage. The stage tracks in Sonic Adventure 2 are often great for providing a window into a character's thoughts, and the raps for Knuckles in this game are quite mellow, often giving the impression his ties to his duties are slipping. Which is perfectly fine, as long as he moves on to something else that's meaningful. Not long afterward, Hero sees Knuckles make a full transition into more of a supporting role. He's still playable, which is a big plus, but his character is much more chill, agreeable and laid back. Look at that slouching game. You see, due to the team-based nature of this game, and the fact that the story was dialed back in complexity by quite a bit compared to the adventure games, Knuckles' involvement is diluted a fair bit, meaning he doesn't exactly get much of an opportunity to shine in his own right. And while it's not explicitly said, he seems to have made peace with the idea of taking a step back from his role as Guardian happy to just grow his broship with Sonic and Tails, and help them to put a stop to Neo's plans. Knuckles has no personal stake this time, no Master Emerald to restore, or Angel Island to get floating again, so we have to assume he's struck a new balance with himself between being a Guardian and being part of Team Sonic, which is perfectly fine. It's not how I would have liked to see his character progress, I would have expanded upon and pushed his history and home further, but it is an entirely believable arc for him based on everything that's came before. He expressed his doubt and confusion in the past, and has slowly but surely come round to the idea of working with Sonic. So this more laid-back team player still makes sense for him in this universe, and also helps elevate Sonic and Tails by showing that they're influential enough to bring this tough guy out of his shell. He also gets to go kinda super in this game. In my opinion, it's not much of a super form. He loses the custom color scheme from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, instead just getting this charity golden orb around him from Sonic sharing his chaos energy. But by all accounts, this is meant to be his super form, and to my knowledge, marks the last time we ever get to see it in the game series. Same goes for his chemistry with Rouge. And coincidence or not, as a video about why Knuckles is so important to the series, this marks the point in his history where I could pretty much wrap things up. But I feel like what comes after is all the more helpful for making the importance of his history crystal clear. In 06, it's clear that Sonic Team really have no idea what to do with Knuckles anymore. Trapped in confliction somewhere between Knuckles from Sonic X and something... worse. Sure, there were aspects of Sonic X Knuckles I didn't like, but at least it was always shown that there was more to him than just a hot-headed idiot. That he also operated on a deeper level than just anger. In 06, the staggering emotional depth we reach is pretty much... SONIC! Hmm, heart-wrenching. First introduced as a messenger from Eggman, he gets to somehow fumble and drop the recording for... reasons. Character development. It's almost like he has no experience making a good first impression. His character is now paired right back to a generic, quick-tempered hothead. Someone who punches first and thinks second, and his place as the butt end of the joke has now well and truly been set. I mean, come on. Okay. just makes no sense. Why crap on him so much for no reason? And his relationship with Rouge now seems to have devolved into pure animosity. And she'll be fine. She has the whole awesome storyline with Team Dark. What does that leave Knuckles with? He doesn't get his own story this time, narratively just seeming to go missing for most of the time, and all the growth and progression his character had is 
now gone, and the games that followed would only serve to push Knuckles further into obscurity. After not even making the cut for Unleashed, they made probably the most interesting playstyle alternative for him and just didn't include him. And that says a lot. He would go on to basically play a non-role in Gens and Lost World, some shameless cheerleading for Sonic, mixed with a heaping slab of comic relief, which nicely paved the way for his appearances in Sonic Boom. Bad enough the clear assault on the eyes this design is, but Knuckles is basically now just a beefy airhead, one whose sole purpose is comedy. The strong-willed, stoic, and dutiful guy you knew before, who slowly opened up to his friends and maybe even discovered love? Yeah, he's gone. Knuckles, go left! Give me a sec. I'm on it! Come on, without us? Oh, you know how much I like punching things. Uh, how do we know we can trust you enough to tell you that Sonic and Tails are a few levels down? What? Negative for Blue Hedgehog. But positive for Red Echidna. Red Echidna irrelevant. You got that last part right. I'm all for humor in my entertainment, and Knuckles is a great character for it due to his naivety, but not at the expense of his character's standing. This is sold as legitimately hurting his feelings. All it would have needed was a silent eye roll or dismissive grunt, not going all in on pathetically needy, and <laughs> not knowing his left from his right. Come on. The guy who was, you know, a treasure hunter. Congrats, guys. You've done it. You've, um, you've made Knuckles dumb. A self-fulfilling prophecy if I've ever seen one. And it's no wonder this is how he's viewed now by many. There was actually a big opportunity for things to improve for Knuckles in Forces. The on paper more serious story, briefly getting to lead a resistance against Eggman when Sonic is out of the equation, the possibilities were all right there for the taking. But he's just brushed aside as soon as Sonic returns, left to fade into the background once more, while the Avatar character and classic Sonic take attention away from characters like Knuckles and Tails, who badly need it. Whoa, you gotta be kidding! That's just a special effect, right? Whoa, you gotta be kidding! That's just a special effect, right? Just a special effect, right? Thank you for that, um, enlightening contribution, Knuckles. Now off back to obscurity with you. We'll, uh, call you when we need you. Sonic Forces left Knuckles' place in the series, as well as in the eyes of Sonic Team, completely up in the air. No, he wasn't pushed into a tree or carted away by a mob of critters, but was this empty, soulless depiction really any better? The chance to make him important and give him something meaningful to do was still completely wasted. Knuckles was introduced to us as the last remaining echidna of Angel Island. As Guardian, he is the last line of defense for the ultimate series MacGuffin, the Master Emerald a heavyweight plot device that has spawned some of the best stories and games in the series. Is this even his job anymore? If Sonic Team can't openly answer that question and continue to ignore it in-game, how is the audience supposed to know? And if his goals and motivations aren't explained, then they can't be that important, can they? Knuckles has starred in some of the best Sonic games of all time his rich and extensive backstory making some of the best narratives in the series possible. But as far as the journey of his character, it seemed at first like they had some ideas on how they might move him on from his tether to Angel Island. Whether that be his will-they-won't-they -they connection with Rouge, or finding a new family in Sonic and & Tails. And hey, I'm sure watching the Master Emerald bestow untold power on a total outsider did not do much for his dedication either but we were at least given possible reasons why his convictions might be slipping. But due to poor execution and a general aimlessness, it can't really be argued that these translated well on screen after Heroes. For me, their ideas for Knuckles peaked with his abilities, backstory, and introduction. And as more and more time went by, and talent at Sonic Team came and went, it became clear that there really was no solid plan for him beyond this, or at the very least it was lost in the shuffle, coming at the worst possible time when the Sonic stupid friends mantra was at its most prevalent. As a result, his trajectory became two-dimensional hothead, to class clown, to inconsequential. 
I really feel that for anything to change, the will has to be there from Sonic Team to hit the reset button on Knuckles. He needs to be a serious character again. And no, that doesn't mean he can't do or say anything funny. As I said, his naivety and social awkwardness already allows for plenty of humor. And this is exactly how I think they will add comedy for him in the second movie. And look, don't get me wrong. There is plenty of room in the series for the annoying or stupid Saturday morning cartoon character. Some of my favorite branches of Sonic media had them, but don't repurpose an existing beloved character for it. One that already has a heap of depth and backstory. Knuckles deserves better than that. The main issue I see for Knuckles is that he peaked early. His prestige and popularity at its highest when he was first introduced, never really to be repeated. Just look at the cover of his debut game. It couldn't be any clearer that in this game, Knuckles is on par with Sonic. These are the roots his character needs to return to. And of all the companies to realize this first, it's paramount. So confident are they in the character of Knuckles and their telling of his introduction that a dedicated Knuckles spin-off series has been announced. The smart money knows the appetite is there for this stuff. People love Sonic's stupid friends and want to see more of them. But Sega has been drinking the Sonic Stupid Friends Kool-Aid for so long now that it took an outside company licensing their product to see it. I just hope the success of the movie universe is enough to give Sega the kick in the ass they need to have faith in their characters again. There's a myriad of different storytelling methods and gameplay styles at their disposal to bring Knuckles or any other character back. Or maybe they'll be happy to just sit back and grow fat off the licensing. Who knows? But everything they need is right there, if they want to do the same thing themselves. I know I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'm probably gonna keep saying it. Knuckles deserves a redemption, as do a whole bunch of other fantastic characters that have fallen by the wayside over the years. And that's what this series is all about. Recognizing and revisiting the points in time where these characters were legitimately important to the series. Big parts of why many, myself included, fell in love with it in the first place. But I think I've probably rambled on enough. And now, I'm eager to hear what you guys think. What was your favorite time period for Knuckles in the series? Do you think his success in the movie will have any impact on the games? And how would you like to see him return in an important role if he ever does? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I've plenty more videos on the way on why certain characters were important, as well as more voice actor analysis and game reviews. So make sure you don't miss anything and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to click that bell icon to be notified when they go live. If you enjoyed this video, do me a solid and drop a like on it. All of those simple clicks and dumb YouTube metrics go a long way. And any support you guys show, as always, is seriously appreciated. A big thank you for watching. And as always guys, take care.